Hello, my name is Jean and I am a knitter. And first, let me tell everyone, I'm sure you really want to know, I have heat in the house, life is good. So I thought today we would focus on gauge. You get it? You'll get it. I knit up a sample. This is Cascade 220. I cast on 20 stitches at the beginning. I used size two millimeter needles. This is 20 stitches. I know it's a size two millimeter because, can you see? I did a knit two together yarn over once for each millimeter. I've only got 20 stitches. This becomes important later. When I measure the gauge, I came out at 6.5 stitches per inch. I did a row of three knit rows in a row to give me a garter stitch ridge. Then I continued knitting with three millimeter needles and on that swatch or piece of the swatch, it calculates out at 5.75 stitches per inch. <clears throat> we move to a four millimeter knitting needle where we have 4.75 stitches per inch. My needles are tiny. My gauge number is larger. Tiny little stitches like little sprinkles take a lot of sprinkles to make an inch. I'm moving up. Four millimeters, 4.75. Five millimeter needles, four stitches per inch. When we get to six millimeter needles, I am getting 3.375 stitches per inch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How come I have three digits after my decimal point here and I've only got one digit back here? Quite simply, this swatch is so small, I cannot accurately measure across two to four inches and then divide to get down to stitches per one inch. This is significant. Why do you need to cast on more than 20 stitches if your stitch gauge is only eight to the inch? Well, you won't be accurate unless you cast on maybe 40 stitches so that you can not include the stitches at the edge, which are funky, and get a good four inch chunk of knitting that you measure across, count your stitches, and divide by four. We move up to an eight millimeter needle, and notice on 20 stitches, I can get eight decrease yarn overs to indicate eight millimeters, and I have 3.125 stitches per inch. We're getting down to three stitches to the inch. Nine millimeters, sorry, there's not enough space for that, I'll, I don't have 24 stitches, which is what I would need to get my yarn overs to fit in. I also do not own seven millimeter knitting needles. They're on order, but you know, it doesn't really matter. You're going to understand the principle of the thing. I have not increased the total number of stitches I'm working on. This is still, this is 20 stitches down here, 20 stitches, 20 stitches, 20 stitches, 20 stitches, 20 stitches. On eight millimeters, I'm getting 3.125 stitches to, it, to the inch. The thing is huge. But my gauge number is small with three. No, it's the opposite. It's a huge gauge. Nine millimeters, I'm getting 2.9 stitches to the inch. And at 10 millimeters, I get 2.625 stitches to the inch. How did I get that three decimal places after my division because I have enough space to measure four inches. I don't have four inches down here. Now the other thing that you will notice, I'll take it off my board. This is, I can read through this. Down here, my word, it's tough as nails, bulletproof. I would use it instead of Kevlar as a motorcycle protective device. It's tough. It doesn't have drape, it stands up on its own. The other thing you will notice 
If you look at it closely, can you see those growing out unevennesses? When you are knitting and you are struggling to get gauge, the tiniest things in your tension will cause your gauge to look funky. The air in my house was really dry because we didn't have any heat going and that meant the humidification wasn't working. So I kept having to put lotion on my hands, which made my hands sticky. Just putting lotion on my hands caused what we call rowing out. It's something that, guess what? It doesn't block out. It's a permanent, oops, I didn't do this quite right in my knitting that was caused by something so insignificant as putting lotion on my hands and not waiting until the lotion was completely absorbed. My hands became just the least little bit sticky. People who knit in humidity, high humidity, understand this. Your hands are wet and sticky and the yarn does not slide and your tension goes all over the place. Same environment, but you can see here, I've got a little bit of rowing out. Here, eh, maybe a touch. And then there's almost none as it gets larger. Well, if you're knitting and you have to work really hard to control your tension. You're not able usually to be consistent when you control your tension. I will say that there is a little bit of rowing out here, but this fabric is loose enough that if I had been more aggressive in my blocking, because I just did a light steam block on this, I wanted it done in a hurry. If I had done a complete soak block, let my yarn completely relax and then spread it out nice and flat, I might have been able to eradicate the rowing out in the stitching that is at a larger gauge. Now, if I am not ever, how picky do I have to be? I mean, 2.9? Um, do I really care that I'm not getting three? Well, at 2.9 over four inches to three, that's one tenth of a stitch. I've got to knit 40 inches to get one stitch difference, and that's still not going to be an inch. So no, at this high size, nine millimeter, when I'm only one tenth of a stitch off, I truly, I'm close enough. Okay, let's be real. I could fudge it with blocking, it'll come out in seaming. There's all kinds of other things that are gonna happen. If my yarn has got some spring to it, I will never notice. If <clears throat> down here, if I am at 6.4, yeah. I'm going to notice that I need to change my needle size. Notice that 6.5, 5.75, there's needle sizes in between two millimeter and three millimeter in quarter millimeter increments. I would be able to get an exact stitches per inch gauge on this. But the other thing I would also do is I would make my swatch on 40 or more stitches so that I had a large enough piece to accurately measure and count over. This is gauge. If I'm knitting sprinkles, tiny little stitches, and I want jelly beans, jelly beans per inch, I've got to go to a larger needle to go from sprinkles to jelly beans, but I could do it. The other thing that I need to be looking at is the fabric that I get as a result. If I want something that's going to be nice and warm, do I really want something that I can read through? Probably not. If I want something windproof, 
Am I going to be working on little tiny needles with lots of stitches per inch? Probably. If I want something that is going to drape well and perhaps show off the pattern, I'm going to be in this neck of the woods. So I cast on 20 stitches and with that one row of knit created a garter ridge so I could tell that I had changed from a two millimeter to a three millimeter to a four millimeter to a five, six, eight. I know that it was nine and 10, but I don't have enough space to make my yarn overs, but I do have a garter stitch row to show me this is not the same needle size as this. So I will not accidentally measure in this range thinking I'm using these needles. I know that these needles stop here and I go to a different needle until I get to here and then I changed again. My bind off is not loose enough to account for the stretch that I have in this fabric, but I just did a standard bind off because this is a gauge swatch. I'm not testing my bind offs. I'm testing to figure out how many stitches per inch are going to give me the fabric that I want out of the yarn that I am using. And I will also tell you that odds are very good that if I went down to a one or a zero, this is Cascade 220. It's a four yarn. It's considered a worsted weight yarn. And it's going to be agony to knit it to a gauge that is much tighter than this. My hands are going to hurt. My hands are going to be very tired. Every time I breathe on my hands, practically wash my hands, apply lotion, I'm going to get rowing out. I'm going to have issues. This is not going to be fun to knit for a garment, a scarf, even a pair of mittens. This is not the right yarn to be knitting on a size two millimeter knitting needle. I don't really even like it on a three millimeter. Four millimeter and up, yeah, you're going to get fabric that you're not going to die while you're knitting it. But when you see something like this and you know that it is going to make a difference, you can figure out why people are telling you don't just knit. If it says eight stitches per inch, don't just cast on eight. Cast on 24, 32, knit for a while, block it and then see what you get and block it the way you're going to block it for the finished object. If you're just going to steam it, that's fine. If you're going to throw it in a basin full of warm water and some suds and apply just the littlest bit of agitation, maybe just let it soak for a long time multiple rinses, depending on what soap you're using, block it the way you want it to be finished. Some errors will never block out. Let's be honest. But this is a gauge swatch that will tell you what this yarn can do. Some things, yeah, it can do it, but it doesn't do a very good job of it. And some things it does really, really well. <clears throat> if you go to the extremes on your gauge swatches, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. If I were to pick up a piece, uh, pick up a ball of yarn, pick up my needles, start going and realize that I'm creating shoe leather. I don't usually want shoe leather. I don't have to finish the swatch. I'll just pull the needles out, rip it out, and go look for a different pattern or go look for a different yarn. It's not going to work like this. But if I'm in 
this neck of the woods getting this kind of a result, yeah, I'm going to make sure that I've cast on enough stitches to get an accurate gauge swatch out of the middle of the swatch because the edges don't always work right. And you'll see it even more here. Can you see how I've got some lumpies and twisties in here? Yeah, don't measure those. Measure in the middle. <clears throat> but this is gauge. If I want three stitches per inch, it's going to be big. And I'm going to use needles that have a large number. I'm going to be knitting jelly beans per inch up at three stitches per inch. Down at this end, I'm going to be knitting sprinkles per inch. If you're knitting a very fine weight yarn and you want it to have some guts and strength to it, you're going to be doing 10, 11 stitches per inch and you're going to be on a size one millimeter knitting needle and you're going to take a lot of time to finish a very small area. Gauge. I can get gauge and I will keep knitting.